Hello. Welcome to the piano bench. Welcome to another episode. This week's episode, we are talking about three exercises to jazz up your playing. Yeah, which is very exciting. I mean, I'm very excited Who about it. I'm. Want to sound jazzier? <laughs> Something stuck in my cup. Um, who doesn't want to sound jazzier? I mean, I definitely am always looking for ways to sound jazzier. You are the jazziest. <laughs> Not, I'm, I mean, I'm getting there. I'm getting there. Um, and it, this was actually, this week's was inspired by a really popular quick tip that we have, mm -hmm. um, which was Sangha Nuna's uh, three exercises to jazz up your playing. Uh, and so I kind of just wanted to do a little bit of a deeper dive into those three exercises that she's teaching in that video. And we're all going to come away with something new that we can do and learn and practice and have fun with, and it'll be a fun little theme for the week. Absolutely. How are you guys doing? It was Thanksgiving in America this past weekend. It's a crazy week for just the world with Black Friday. What? Cyber Monday is today. Uh. Has everyone been doing their shopping? Oh, and our Cyber Monday deal, our piano headphones. Ooh. Launch, hey, you matches even your shirt. You got the black Ooh. piano shirt, the red sweater with the nice headphones. Oh, yeah. And they're comfy, hey? so comfy. And they just fit so nicely around your ear. Ugh, like. I love them. These are great headphones and we initially we only had these as a bonus if you upgraded to a lifetime membership but um, then Scott thought you know what let's make these available to everybody. So they are are in the piano shop. If you go piano.com forward slash shop you can get your pair set. You can get your headphones. Yeah. <laughs> um, these are great because we worked with our friends at Dexibell to create to create something that is going to be the perfect companion to your electronic piano or keyboard, you can use it with your computer or your phone or whatever um, you, you'd like to, but these are just, they're, they're not heavy, they're nice and light, they feel really, really good, they sound incredible. Truman assures me that all of the specs on these are <laughs> tickety-boo. 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 <laughs> yeah, and they're limited edition as well, so yeah. we're not going to have them forever. Mike is asking if we can hide one for him because... It's not in the cards for him right now, but he would like us to hide a pair. You want me to hide a pair? Okay. Well, <laughs> here's the thing. I discovered like a few that were like put aside. Did you actually? Mm -hmm. You found a secret I stash. I found the secret stash. <laughs> so we'll see what happens. Beautiful. Okay, so that was it. But I truly want to know how you guys did you have a great Thanksgiving weekend? For those of you who don't have Thanksgiving, I hope you had a great weekend. Um, comment and let me know if you celebrated and that included turkey or pie or whatever because you know that the food's super important, right? Oh, absolutely. What Are you a ham person at Thanksgiving no. or are you uh, your turkey, 100%? Turkey. I'm, I'm most of the time, I'm turkey. And this last Thanksgiving, I had like a smoke like honey ham. Ooh. And it was, it was so good. And I think I'm going to like alternate now because it, it was just, it was real nice. I don't know. Are you guys honey ham people, or are you are or, you turkey all the way? Or you can be no vegetable fact. people too. Or vegetable and people. And that is great. Or you could be vegetarian. I love vegetables. Mashed potatoes is it's what it's great. all about. That's what it is. That's where it's at for me. It doesn't matter what. Else. I don't care what else is on the plate, as long as there's mash like garlic mashed okay. potatoes. I do concur with that. Um, Maybe some gravy. Look! 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 Okay. Esther P. celebrated by getting a Piano Lifetime membership. Oh! Boom! Congratulations! Congrats and welcome to Piano for Life. You're stuck with us forever and do, ever and ever. Do you think that we're going to be teaching when we're like super old and we're yeah. still going to be doing our quick tips on I the think piano so. bench? Because you know what? It's just a part of who we are now. Yeah. There's I mean, really no getting there'll, be, there'll be some younger teachers, but we'll still be here. We're going to stay here forever. <laughs> for sure. I'm we excited are. for that. Di Di Dia, did I say it right? Dia. Honey ham and turkey and vegetables, vegetarian or vegan. Why? Just why? Oh, <laughs> everybody, yes. Um, and then also cranberry sauce from oh, Wayne. Yeah, cranberry I, sauce. I want to love cranberry sauce. <gasps> you don't <laughs> like cranberry sauce? No, I think it just comes down to like um, I don't believe that fruit should be with, like sweet and savory are not combined. So like you're against like ham and pineapple Like pineapple, pineapple pizza is bad, so therefore you shouldn't have, but I did All have right. a homemade cranberry sauce one that wasn't from the can that I loved. Okay. Yeah. So, all right. I don't know if we can be friends anymore, but um, 
Der we can be co Derek is my friend, so it's fine. <laughs> yes, and we love everybody here, no matter what your Thanksgiving food preferences are. Cheers. Cheers. There we go. Okay. All right, let's do let's dive into some piano news because I actually heard about some devastating news. I don't like news this news, Kevin. In the piano this is terrible world. News. Terrible news. Okay, everyone, if you are a piano player, which odds are if you are watching this right now, you either like piano or you have a piano or you're learning piano. Um, and recently I've seen multiple multiple articles popping up about a piano shortage, a digital piano shortage in the world. <gasps> no! No! Um, that's because of the chips, the microchips. There's a microchip shortage across the entire globe right now, and that's affecting everyone from the automobile industry to the gaming console industry to pretty much anything that use, is an electronic of sorts. And it has finally reached the piano you know, spectrum That's Korg to terrible. Roland to Casios to Yamahas. And so there's actually going to be a digital piano shortage this year where many of, you know, retailers, uh, like Guitar Center, Long McQuaid, stuff like that, they can't get their hands on digital pianos this year or they only have a very limited number of stock. And because of that, as of next year, because the demand has gone up so much, the prices of digital pianos might be going up as well. So... That should tell you if you are in, you know, you might want to upgrade your piano before that happens. If you can, if you can get your hands on a piano, or, or Kevin, or tell me what's your. I'm gonna view this as an opportunity. Okay, glass half full. I yes, like it because you know what? I think this might bring back the acoustic. The acoustic piano. But can I say something? No. <laughs> Fine. But with the acoustic piano, you can't use our wonderful piano headphones. You can still put them around your head and look cool, okay? Okay, so accessories now. You, oh, no, I have the, no, I figured it out. Okay, You know what me. you can do with your acoustic piano? Yeah. Is you can plug your headphones into your computer to hear your piano lesson. Mm. Yeah, smart. And then your acoustic will be nice and loud, so you'll still be able to hear that too. Right. So it's a win-win. Genius, win -win. genius. Yeah. Nothing will ever replace the acoustic piano. That's No, this is the return of the acoustic. I'm calling it out right now. I really hope so. I hope so too. They're heavy. They're cumbersome. Yes. They're un hard to control, um, <laughs> but it's fine. Uh, I would always use the headphones with piano and my digital, but I think Lisa is right. Yes. yes. Yeah. Yes, yes, yeah, yes. I agree with you, Lisa. Changed my mind. Okay, so Lisa, when you are playing piano, uh, do you have an acoustic or do you have an electric at home? I have both. You have both. Okay, so when you're practicing on your piano at home, mm -hmm. what kind of learner are you? Like when you when you're practicing a song. And you make a mistake. Like, what is your go-to? <laughs> what do you do? Do you like hit the note at the same time a lot, or do you like ah? Oh, like, let me try that again. And like, what do you do when you make a mistake? I sometimes I say swears. You say swears. So, <laughs> like, swears at the piano or swears at yourself? Just to the air. To the air. I just, I never feel like whoever I feel, catches it. I'll, I'll say things like what the Lisa or ah, get it together. <laughs> <laughs> or I'll talk to my hands. I'll be like, "Come on!" So you're getting you're getting mad at your hands or yourself. Like, why did I mess up? And then I'll have like a wiggle. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> a what, a, what about you? <laughs> Me? Oh, I I kind of I've gone through stages in my life where yeah. at first, if I made a mistake and I was halfway through the song, I would just speed through the first half of the song till I got there again and like <laughs> just try my best to do it. But like. The last five years has been like me like attacking the piano where I just hit that one note like ten times. I'm like because I just miss up. it. I'm growing. I'm getting more angry as I grow up and learn piano. Um, but <laughs> we actually have a video that inspired this kind of thought process about what kind of piano learner are you. Uh, let, we'll watch the video and then you can let us know in the comments what you know what kind of style do you relate with most because there's there's a few different types. But anyways, let's roll the clip. <laughs> The wind was in my eye. No, I just didn't warm up properly. It was your fault! Oh, it's okay, Alex. Just try again. You got this, Alex. Uh, what? Maybe I should just give up.
<laughs> that was ideal. Uh, so, yeah. I feel like I've been eaten every one of those at yeah. some point. At one point in time, I think I've also been every one of those. <laughs> I like the self abuse. It was like abusing the <laughs> piano, and then he was abusing himself. He's like, come on, come on, wake up, wake up. <laughs> <laughs> but you know what? Like, it's good to, it's really important to make laughs about that. But I think it's really important to acknowledge that when you're learning something, there's guaranteed frustration as like, that's just part of the story. And I feel like that's energy, right? And yes. energy has to be moved. So if moving that energy for you means like, you got to like have a frustrated moment, have a frustrated moment. And also um, for me, some of the self-talk that goes on is like, okay, Lisa, take a deep breath. Yes. Or why do you like this song? Try to find the reason. Yeah. Or what part of this can you do well? Or maybe it'll be better tomorrow. Yeah, the positive the positive reinforcement is good. Yeah. It is that's the healthy way to practice. Is that the way we all practice? No. <laughs> no. <laughs> but it's it's good. And it, you know, mistakes happen. Every time you learn a song, you're gonna make mistakes. So hundred percent. Hundred percent. So that's yeah, that's the kind of piano learner I am. Speaking of learning piano. Oh, Ed has the right solution. Oh, what does Sorry. Ed say? Sorry about your segue there. He just turns off the piano and gets a crown royal on ice. <laughs> just turn off the piano. Okay. Time for the crown time royal. Time out. <laughs> Grown up time out. I think I got to try that that uh, that method, Ed. I do keep the bourbon close to the piano. Oh, dear. I That's do. not a coincidence, I yeah, guess. It's not, no. <laughs> well, okay. we have something new for you to learn Ooh, my gosh, at the piano. Guys. And hopefully you're not spamming the note or self-abusing or abusing the piano. No. Uh, this one is, is one of the songs that gets requested the most when I'm at... Uh, Piano bars, and uh, it is the Skyfall theme song from James Bond, or the James Bond theme song from the movie Skyfall. It's Skyfall by, or as performed by Adele. The song is called Skyfall. Yes, it is Skyfall, and it's from the movie Skyfall, and it's, it's about the sky falling. <laughs> yeah. But the song is is it's so iconic, so epic. Um, it has like the James Bond theme, which if you don't know what the James Bond theme is, it's like going from like a C minor chord to like an A flat major, and then you just kind of raise the top note, it's like G, A flat, A, A flat, and it kind of makes a C minor, A flat, F major seven to F minor seven kind of sound, and that's the James Bond progression, that's the James Bond sound. Very, very cool. And we actually do have a clip of it that we're about to show, because it's gonna release on the piano site today, on Musora site, so if you are interested in learning this one, I highly recommend it. I kind of start off with a goofy intro in this one here, it's but don't worry. It's not goofy it, at all, it's <laughs> straight up production. I had to take like 10 takes of this because I I couldn't stop laughing, and I think they even gra grabbed a laughing take, and they're just like, I'm gonna cut it early so that we can use this as an intro, and the, the best effects, like there's like circles coming in on my face. Anyways, you'll see it here. Let's roll the clip. <laughs> Castro, Kevin Castro. Today we're gonna to learn one of the most epic piano songs ever, Skyfall as performed by Adele. And it's actually a lot easier than you think. You hear the first two, three seconds of the song and you instantly know what it is. So let's jump into it. Okay, so the first thing we're gonna learn is the C minor add nine chord, which is the intro chord. It sounds something like this. And when you play it, you want to do a little bit of a roll, so it's going to sound a little bit like this. C, C, E flat, G, D. That's slowly, one more time. And now all together. And then we're going to kind of come down with this little D, C, G. Those three notes. D, C, G, for when the piano comes in. and then E flat and C is where you're gonna land. Let's try this from the beginning. Hold that chord, get your fingers in position. So the right hand for the whole intro is gonna hit two notes, E flat and C. It's just going like this in quarter notes. Really easy. The left hand is where you have to actually watch for. So the intro sounds like this. One and two and three and four and one and two and three and four. E. That's the tricky part, those Fs. So the main part is one and two and three and four and one and two and three and four. E and a. Uh. So that last 
F note is gonna be on the E of four. So it goes four, E, and a. Uh. So everything else you can count in eighth notes, but except for that last one, you wanna count it in those 16th notes. So I'll play it all together. Now I'm counting one and two and three and four and one and two and three and four. And one, one and, and two. two. And th there's so many very important core skills that are happening in the song. Yes. And that rhythm's important. Very important. Yes. And those chords are important. Did you know that that's called rhythmic solfege? Like one E and a two E and a three E and a four E and or one and two mm -hmm. and yeah, counting that, it's called rhythmic solfege. I actually learned that when I was teaching about it in, in theory. I, I didn't I knew what it was, but I didn't know the actual term for it. Rhythmic solfege. Yeah. We should do a course on that. Yeah, just how to count, time. how to count, and rhythmic solfege. I mean, I would take a course on. Can use all the help I can get. Um, also, okay, so we're gonna. There's cool stuff coming, but did you guys know that this book has uh, sold out? Wow. That's crazy. I just want to talk about all these things for a second. <laughs> did you know that this Christmas book is amazing? <laughs> oh, actually, hold on a second, Kevin. Do yeah. you know how to play any of these? Um, I could probably play a couple of them could for you, sure. Could you just hold on for just a moment? Just pick one, any one you want. Like, like, well, Are you going to use I'm notes? Gonna, oh, my favorite one. I'm going to play it the way it's... Oh, uh, this is a good one. Hmm. Should I show them or should I just play it? You can show them and play it. Okay, I don't know if we can... Uh, I'm going to... Don't. Oh, there we go. go Christmas on. time is here. This is probably my favorite song in this book. I had to have it in here. It's from a Charlie Brown Christmas. It's Vince Guaraldi uh, who's doing this song and uh, who composed the song. And it starts off with a, a pedal intro, actually. Ooh. Yeah. Do you want me to, how much do you want me to play? You want me to play like, the you, first bit? Just, yeah, just a the little bit. The first little bit. A little intro and then I'll play the main theme. So it starts off actually kind of doing some like modal jazz chords. It starts off with an A minor over C. It sounds like this. Uh, then A flat major seven over C from the parallel minor, then F major seven over C, back to A flat major seven over C. Ugh. And there's that E flat seven it's sharp so 11, juicy. that super nice jazzy chord. to play the songs in this book. We've got this on sale over the Black Friday, Cyber Monday weekend as well. And don't worry about not getting it on time because we're gonna ship it to you right away, but we're also gonna send you a digital copy of the public domain of songs in the book. Yes. So you can get started with learning them right away. So that makes it extra awesome. Extra awesome, so you get it day one, you order the book, and right away you'll get an email with the PDF as well. Yes, okay, so that's that. And then you guys already know about these books, we don't have to talk about them. <laughs> the, you didn't <laughs> mention it. Well, no, just our good old chords and just, scales just book. Just every chord just and scale. Just the only book you'll ever need for your chords and scales. <laughs> and no big deal. And then just this planner that'll keep you on track. No big deal. <laughs> Those are all the books we got right now, Those hey? Those are all the books. Okay, now we have to do the jazz things. Okay, the jazz time things. Time for jazz. Well, that's why I chose that jazzy Christmas song. It's, it's um, yeah, that's that's the one in there that's, uh, it's probably, the, yeah, the jazziest song in the bunch. That one and the Christmas song. You know, chestnuts roasting. On an open fire. Yeah, that's the one. Uh, we will be doing lessons for a couple of these, but we're also going to be theming out our piano bench. A couple of the episodes we'll be focusing on um, running through some sections of this. Yes. So if there's anything that you've been like, oh, I really wish you guys could go over this for me. Uh, make sure you email us and we'll we'll take note of yeah, that. Yeah, and if you're a piano member as well, I would love to see some student reviews come in of songs from Ooh, of the Christmas, Christmas songbook. Songs. And if you know, if it's in a level that you even feel is too easy for you, try to make it more advanced and I can help you out with that. Either myself or Cassie or Brett or Lisa, one of us can help you take all these songs to the next level too and show you how to do it. Let's do this. All right, so yes. three ways to jazz. make your playing jazzy. Three exercises to jazz up your playing. Okay, so in the video, the first tip that Sangha teaches us is Walking bass line, or she, I think she calls it bass walking. 
which I like too. It's the sweetest thing. Ever. <laughs> it's the bass walking. It's the bass walking. Okay. It's the walking bass line. That is one of the, the most crucial techniques for a pianist. If you're just solo piano, um, playing the walking bass line is instantly gonna make your playing sound jazzy. Like there's no other way around if you learn how to do a walking bass line. Um, and so, Lisa, let's take a popular jazz standard. Let's take Fly Me to the Moon. It's the best. It's the one that a lot of people wanna learn. Um, and it works really, really well with uh, the walking bass line. So. The bass walking. The bass walking, the bass walking. Okay, let's jump to the piano here. Okay, so Fly Me to the Moon is in the key of A minor. Thank so, goodness. Thank goodness. So, that is the original key of the song, which means all white notes. Doesn't mean that there are only white notes in the whole song, it's just that is the tonal center, the key of the song. So right now, I'm not gonna even touch the, the seventh chords or like the ninths or all the crazy like extension stuff. We'll get into that later. I'm just gonna play triad, so just the simple chords. So the chords, the first three chords are gonna be A minor, then to D minor, then to G chord, then to C major. So there's, sorry, there's four chords. Let's do it one more time. So A minor, D minor, G major, to C major. And so a lot of people think that when you're playing the melody in your right hand, that your left hand has to only play chords. So that's the only thing you can do, either arpeggios or chords. And that's kind of like the only thing you can do. But there is another option, the walking bass line. This is a more intermediate technique, pretty much uh, for jazz, like the other ones. This is probably the hardest technique out of all three of them. But what you need to know is it's a lot easier than you think it is. And as a beginner, you can still use this walking bass line. You can still play it as a beginner. You just might not put your hands together. It's a great exercise to get dexterity in your fingers. So if you're a beginner, don't be like, okay, peace out. No, 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 no. I want you to play this with Kevin. It's going to be fun. Okay, so the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna take a walking bass line, but I'm actually gonna just keep the chords on my right hand. So as if Lisa is singing, or if you are the singer yourself, I'll show you how to do that, and then I'll add the melody in my right hand afterwards. But for now, just so you remember what the chords are, my first two chords, let's remember, it's A minor, and going to D minor. So all a walking bass line is, is it's kind of a puzzle. I have four beats to get from A minor all the way to D minor. So I have to look at the root notes, so A to D. So if I have four beats, I can just go like this. One, two, three, four, and then I land on D on beat one. One more time. One, two, three, four, one. So I've made it to my target note of D by beat one. Now I have some choices. My next chord after D minor is going to be G. So I can either go up to this G, or I can go down to this G. I just went up, so let's hear what this sounds like. One, two, three, four. Now let's walk down this time. Two, three, four, one. And, and you I arrived. Land on G. I arrived. So if I add the chords in my right hand, let me try that nice and slow. You're at your destination. One, two, three, four, four and then D. One. Walking down. Three. Four. And now let's walk back up. One, two. two Three, four. <laughs> so I had to add an extra note there. So why did I add this B flat? Because you needed four beats. I needed four notes before I get to that C, and I was short one note. So I had to go one, two, three, four. And then I arrived at my destination of C. And I just made it through four chords using a walking bass line. So I'll play it all together. Take a listen. Okay, so now, if I wasn't playing the chords here, this walking bass line should imply those chords now. So it's gonna sound like this. Oh, and then I go down. Let me do that one more time. I have to go back down. And that melody, I was just doing all quarter notes right there in my right hand. So all the notes were being played at the same exact time. It's a really great exercise for hand independence. Now, 
Now, one more little trick I can tell you with the walking bass line is gonna be that you wanna try and use something called approach tones. What? So, what is an approach tone? What? Write that down, that's very important. Get out your pencils, Get friends. out your little note writing utensils because we're, we're, we're in a piano lesson right now. Okay, what is an approach tone? Basically, an approach tone is when you have your target note, so for example, the first pattern I did was A, B, C, C sharp, and D. That was going from the A to the D. I can get there a couple different ways though. And the idea behind the approach tone is that you wanna reach your target destination by a semitone, either a semitone up below or from a semitone above. So there's a couple different ways I can do it. I can go like one, two, three, four, one. And that totally works oh. because I came at it from a different angle that time. But you always wanna come at it from a half step away? From a half step away. Or I could do something called like an enclosure where I kinda like target the inside and the outside of the D. So I could do one, two, three, four, one. And that time I kinda did like a little skip, but I still approach the D from a semitone. So I can either do this way or this way. Or I can get there like, then the possibilities kinda become endless. I can do this. Or that's one we did. Or I think it, you can just kind of keep on going, but as long as you kind of approach it from one of those two directions, um, the way that it sounds best is if you just approach it in the direction that you're walking. Because remember, it's called a walking bass line. Not a jumping bass Not a jumping bass line. Not so a hopping bass line. Exactly. So you want to try and keep it as steady in like the step motion. So if you're in the middle of walking up, approach it from an, uh, you know, a semitone below so you, you I'm land there. Try it. Are you going to do it? <laughs> that was like the most amazing. <laughs> That was incredible, I deserve an award. Beautiful. I wanna try this. All right, try this, try this out. So, I'm gonna play the chords for you, you try the walking bass line. So we're going from A minor to D minor. You got it. So that means that my target is is D, my first you target is D. It. And I wanna approach it from either here or here. So yeah, let's try an exercise, try to hit this one. Before this one. Before that one. And I have four beats. You got it. Okay. I forgot the next chord already. That was it, that was D. And then so now we're gonna go to G. So you can either go down to this G, or you can go down up to this G. I would recommend going lower because this is getting a little high. Yeah, yeah. And basses are typically, they're lower notes. So you wanna try and stay in this region of the piano when you're doing your bass line. So my targets are A, D, D G, G, and then C. C. You got it. And I have four beats, and I'm approaching all of those from a half step away. Yeah. Okay. So see if you can make it the puzzle yourself. Oh dear. I'll play the chords. Three, four. Yeah. Wait, I'm going Almost to A. Almost going Wait. to G. Yeah, you're going to G. So one, two, three. Yeah, that works. That works. Yeah, yeah, you got it. That sounds gross. So you don't have to do those. Those uh, like sometimes it sounds better if you just go up naturally, but. Oh, because that was a half step. Mm -hmm. Where's my brain? <laughs> I mean, but it wasn't a half step when you went one, two, three, you jump, you jump to that A flat right. instead of the A. Right, right. They both work. You can either go to A or you can go down from A flat to G. Either is fine. Either is fine. Or I could have gone from here. Exactly. Well, I like I how that one, sounds. One, two, three, four. It kind of leads into that upward motion. So there are really interesting things you have to think about because you're kind of thinking like you're a bass player if you're, um, Playing if you're a doing bass a walking bass line, you are essentially a bass player. Should we please do that again? Yeah, let's do it one more time. I feel like I need another stab at this. Okay, okay once go. again, hold it. One. Target, wait, wait, wait. Okay. Targeting A, B, G, and C. You got it. <laughs> okay, I'm ready. Three, four. That works. I feel like I could eventually get this. That's a walking, and you just do that for the whole chord progression for the entire song. So that's that's step number one. But I want to stay here. <laughs> I mean, yeah, that's the thing. You would work on this for a little while. You wouldn't just get this once and then be like, oh yeah, I, I know how to do walking bass line forever. You'd practice this in lots and lots of songs. Okay, that's really fun. And my, yes, I'm gonna go back to my song. Okay. Because <laughs> I could do that <laughs> for a while. <laughs> No, I'm just gonna gracefully. You're just gonna gracefully. I'm just gonna jump gracefully. The... Beautiful. No okay. Problems. So that is step number one. 
Step number two now is going to be something called comping, which is just accompanying. And so Sangha also talks about this, and she provides a certain rhythm. So if you do want to actually practice these techniques, um, Sangha does have, we have an amazing practice feature underneath we do. In, our, in our piano website where you can actually take these patterns, and Sangha teaches you all the patterns that you need to know so you can start practicing along with chord progressions uh, to start making your song sound jazzy. Because here's the thing, we just did it with a jazz song, but you can do this to pretty much any song. Are you ready and for we're going we're gonna to show you. Should we do it right now? Should we you just, tell me what's next? Let's do comping, and then we'll we'll transition it and show you how you can apply that to different types of music. Okay, 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 okay. Okay, so comping. So Lisa, like, what would you what would you describe comping being? Like, what is comping? It's um, it's when you get stuff for free. <laughs> That that is you're not wrong. You're not wrong. That is comping, <laughs> comping a ticket, in in the musical sense of the word. Comping will be accompanying yourself on the piano. That's just like the short. So term is comping song. like short for accompanying? Then you got it. No way. Comping. I actually didn't know that. Yeah, comping comping is short for accompanying. <sighs> company comp. I Thing. <laughs> that's just the short word. I, I didn't make up I didn't make up the slang for it. I think that's kind of dumb. <laughs> well, I don't like how what that. Would you, what would you like to call it? A comp? <laughs> yes, like accomplishing. A, that's, that sounds like an accomplice. You're, a comp, you're accomplishing <laughs> something. Okay, back to comping. Okay, so comping ideas. If we're doing these chords now. <laughs> two, <three>. <laughs> <laughs> we're gonna try this rhythm out right here. But, oh, I'm gonna just keep it on triads for now. So Kevin, this, you're sounding too fancy. I'm not there yet. I know, I know. It sounds fancy. It's not that fancy yet. Here's the rhythm I'm gonna hit. I'm gonna go one, two, three, and four, and. So I'm gonna hold it Wait, once I hit the add, and of three. All, the, all of them have to add, have the ands. When you so I'm gonna go out. one, and two, and three, three, and four, and. And when I hit the and, I can either choose to hold it or I can just do a little quick stab. So you can kind of mix and match. So let me do it one more time. One, and two, and three, and four, and. One more time, I'll do a short stab this time. One, and two, and three, and four, and. So you can either hold it, or you can just do a quick little short stab. So I'll do one round where I'm holding the and of three every single time. So it's gonna sound like this. And the chords again, one more time, A minor, D minor, G major, C major. I'm just doing reposition for now. Eventually you want to try and get this in inversions so your hands doesn't have to jump around as much, but for now, let's just do reposition. So it's gonna sound like this. One and two and three and four. And That's on one, the end. And two and three and four. And one and two and three and four. And one and two and three and four. Before? Yeah. You're doing the four before. No, on the end of three. One and two and three and right there. That That's, makes sense to me. Yeah, just on the end of three, and you can either do it short or you can hold it. So okay. now that you kind of have that, then you can kind of mix and match whether you want to hold it or you want it to be super short and sparse. And so here is the challenging part. What? Get, get that what rhythm down. Yet? See if you can add. This is a challenge, and this might take some time to try it high and separately, but see if you can do a walking bass line while you are comping those chords. So if I do it really, really slow, and you can try this along with me if you want, and you can even replay this section and do it lots and lots and lots too, until you finally get it. So you're finally playing jazz. Okay, it's gonna sound like this. One, and two, and three, and four, and. So what I just did there was one, two, Three, and in between the C and the C sharp, I kind of hit that quick stab of the A minor. So it sounds like this again. Three, four. One, and two, and three, and four. D minor, same thing. And just land it on C there for now. This is when you slowly start to put those things together. And that's just that's just one rhythm of comping, but knowing how to comp is very important because the secret ingredient to comping in jazz, are you ready? Do you know what it is? The secret ingredient to comping in jazz is swing. 
Oh, I actually like this one. Swing rhythm. Yeah. This is one that I'm not going to protest. Because <laughs> like, it doesn't sound secret? right without it. No, it doesn't. No, it I, sounds all wrong, actually. Yes, that is very true. Swing rhythm in jazz music is all about the eighth note and making the eighth notes swing. And so once you get more um, eighth notes in your music, or you can even add it into walking bass lines, or when you have it in the melody, or you're comping, like anytime you have to subdivide the beat to one, and two, and three, and four, and even the way I'm counting it right there, that is swing. And the easy way, I'll, I'll do the easy way to, to think about swing, and then I'll the actual um, way that, in theory, it's written out. Before you do it, can you play it no swing and then swing just so okay. our ears can here, know what you're talking here about? Here is how I would play um, a, a C major scale with no swing. This is just one and two and three and four. And it sounds like this. One and two and three and four and one and two and three and four. Now if I add swing, you can hear a big difference in this. Sounds like you're having a good yeah. day. Yeah, <laughs> one and two and three and four. It's like you're and skipping one along. And two and three and four. And so the main difference there is just the way I'm subdividing the beat. It's still one and two and three and four and, but when I'm doing straight rhythm, which is very typical in, in you know classical music or even parts of jazz like uh, bossa novas, Latin music is typically straight rhythm as well. Um, but in swing music, blues music, um, it's all about the swing. So ain't got that. You ain't got that swing. Yeah. The trick is going long, short. I was listening. Did you know good. that jazz song? I do. Was I do. it legible? Thank you. I just needed this musical interlude, Kevin. Yeah, that's As all you, you needed. Were. As you were. <laughs> As I was. Long, short, long, short. So. Long, short, long, short, long, short, long, short. That's the kind of the way you want to be counting the one and two and threes. La, ti, da, ti, da, ti, da. Yeah. So the ands are going to be short. So one and two and three and four and. If you can apply that to your playing, anything you do, one and two and three and four and all those ands, really, really short. That's what's going to make your music swing. And if someone says, oh, you need to add a little bit more swing in there, or, you know, like, you're like, what do you mean more swing? They want you to keep it even longer and keep the short note even shorter. So it'd be like, one, and two, uh, that's a bad example. One. That's a little bit more swing. It's very similar, but compared to straight, one and, or one and two and three and four and, <laughs> ah, I'd have to hear that song. I can't think of how it goes. Really? Yeah, <laughs> paradise and put up a parking lot. Yeah, oh, yeah, no, no. Big hotel. Is that the. She don't know what she got till it's gone. Paradise. So that'd be like. Sorry, that was Big, big Yellow Taxi? Yeah. Uh, anyway, <laughs> so there are songs that, uh, that you can make into into jazz, kind of give it a jazz feel by adding that walking bass line, having a comping pattern that fits you, and it, but it does take some practice. Uh, the thing is, so Passenger, Let Her Go, that was the song that we were saying that that is the furthest thing away from jazz. It's very indie. It's like an indie folk song. Um, what are the lyrics at the start? Do you remember how it starts? Um, uh, A minor. C. Sue just did it with Let It Be. Let It Be a great one, too. Uh, so, like, that song ha there's, has nothing to do with jazz. Zero jazz. <laughs> Zero jazz in that song. But if I add a walking bass line, I add some comping, and I make it swing, it could sound like this. Jazz so, uh, and then, But you also have to swing the melody, Lisa, now. So it does ah. change a little okay, bit. Okay, okay, okay.
stuff like that. Like that had no business being a jazz song, but no we made it work. No business at all. We made it work, right? And and the thing is, not it, it doesn't always have to you know sound like jazz. Like you can keep it rhythm straight and add jazz techniques. So this next one that we're going to talk about is um, is tension. That's what Sanger likes to likes to add. I mean, there, there's so many more things that you know make songs jazzy, like. For example, the harmony, what, like one of the most important rules in jazz is the 2-5-1 progression, which we've done lots of videos on and talked about. Um, but once you can analyze stuff like that, like you'll start to see 2-5-1s in music everywhere. For example, a song like Stevie Wonder, Isn't She Lovely? Isn't she lovely? Oh. You got it. That was nice. So the song, um, if I play it in, in C minor here, let me just tell you what the chords would be right now. It's C minor to F dominant 7 to B flat, to E flat. So at first glance, it doesn't look like much, right? So this song is in the key of E flat major, but they take what's called the two five one, which is very common in jazz, right away, C minor, going to an F dominant seven. And if you're familiar with the key of E flat, F seven should technically be F minor seven, but they're doing an F ma major seven right here, sorry, F dominant seven, because it's acting as a two five one, to B flat, but B flat is acting as a five D flat. That is way too advanced. That is way too advanced. What are you doing right now? I, I just, don't understand. That what was, happened just now? That was an in theory snippet. Did you just? Ha <laughs> you just theoried. It was a two five one, and when the one acted as a five to the one, too much. That's why that's not one of the tips today. We'll save that for an in theory class. In theories, if you are interested in diving really deep into these topics, are a lesson that I host on Thursdays. Um, oh, I get it. That was a shameful plug a shameful about plug. You how know you've got your um, in theory coming up. <laughs> yeah, I understand what just happened there. See, in theory, it's, it's a chance where I get to really dive deep into. Uh, Lisa tunes in every now and again, and I feel like she tunes in at the worst possible moments because I'll be doing something like, uh, I don't know. Like something like this, and then she's like, "Kevin, what are you doing? What Kevin? are you doing?" <laughs> I'm like, "Listen, it was just an example. That wasn't the lesson." And then, anyways, mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. what were we? T oh, the third, the third trick. This is what happens when Kevin talks about. Yeah, theory. I just, I just keep going, and I, I can go for. That's like, like I'm thinking about these in theory classes. They were supposed to be like 30 minutes, because I'm like, how am I going to talk just about? Just a quick little 20 quick, minutes, Kevin. Like, They're supposed to be 20 minutes. 20 minutes. 20 minutes. Let's talk about theory stuff. And it, it's turned into an hour, like I'm, t yeah. Which anyways. I'm delighted by. <laughs> okay, the third step, tension, adding tension. So in Fly Me to the Moon, we had those triads, right? So now if we start to add more and more notes, uh, typically if you look up the, the chords for Fly Me to the Moon, you'll see some seventh chords, minor seventh chords and, and stuff like that. So if we add this. this, beautiful, that's four. all I need. A minor seven. D minor seven is what the chord would say next. Oh, pretty. G dominant seven to C major seven. Love. Those are the chords in the song. If I play it, I can play it, make it nice and light. It's so smooth. Just adding that seventh is already making the song up feel a lot jazzier than just the triads, right? Ooh, is that the tension? That is not even the tension yet. That's the pretty chords. Ugh. What Sangha does, and this is really, really cool, is she likes to add like some of the nine. Like she'll she'll add like the A minor seven, but she might add like the B as well. So take a listen to this. It adds a little bit of tension, and the next it time it mysterious. She doesn't play it, but then the time afterwards, maybe she'll add like the A to make like a dominant nine chord. And that's what she's doing in in her quick tip is adding those upper extensions, that's what they're actually called, but an easy way to think about it is adding tension to the chords, because all it's doing is adding more and more color to the chords that you're actually playing. So if you actually wanna know how to do this properly and add it into your own playing, I would definitely recommend checking out this video with Sangha. It is also up on YouTube, three exercises, oh no, uh, three. Three ways to jazz up Three ways playing, to jazz up your playing. playing more jazzy. Yeah, I believe it's. It's a really good lesson. A really, that was I think my one of my favorite lessons that she taught when she was out here. It was amazing. And we love Sangha here at Piano, we so. We really love Sangha. So. I also like, I want you guys to know, this is meant to like get you excited to be like, what, how, how? And then, oh, I can do that, but I want more. And then you go and you dive into the lessons. Yes. All of this takes work and time. It does. And I am in the process of creating a, a jazz course that takes you from beginner, as if you've never seen jazz before, to the end where you're actually playing 
jazz jazz standards. And we're Solo taking our winner. time with this because it's going to be perfect. So it's coming in 2023. Yes. Now, we have a couple really important things. Number one, we have some questions to answer, but we'll get Beautiful. to that because number one, we have, a, we have, well, all of our students of the week are special. But it's time to announce our student of the week. Yes. Um, I think this week may be our youngest student of the week yet. Yes. Which I am very excited about. Um, Lisa, would you like to? The student of the week for today is Chilo Chama playing Speechless. Check this out. Oh my goodness. I play. cannot believe how good her timing is. Oh, so and, good. And just how smooth her playing is. And I I was I was not that good at that age. I know. Yeah, no. I wasn't that good <laughs> yesterday. Sometimes. <laughs> and that's a that's a hard song too, speechless. Yes! Like, what key was she in? She wasn't even in like a uh, She was in C minor. That's a, that's a really hard song to play. Um, that's from the from the the Lad movie. It was like a new song added in there, and so that was very cool that she was playing that one. Congratulations, you've been natural talent, my dear. Keep playing and keep sending us video updates. I posted in the piano chat um, a link to her YouTube channel. If you guys want to go and give her a follow and just yeah, some encouragement, yeah, that'd be leave, awesome. Leave a comment in, on the page and on the videos. Yeah. She's got a lot of great videos on there. I think there's like Green Sleeves was another one mm. that was really good. So and, good. Taylor Swift song, but yeah, so keep up the great work. Congratulations on being Pianot's Student of the Week. All right, we're gonna bust through a few questions here. Um, somebody was asking about my hoodie. What size am I wearing? This one is a small, and I love it. It's just perfect. And this is after I washed and dried it. Beautiful. I love my Pianot hoodie. Um, also, they're on sale right now, aren't they, Truman? Sale. For today. Today's the last day. Oh. I think we're, what are these, 18? Yeah, Ooh, and the t-shirts are five bucks. All of them are five bucks. So if you haven't gone and got your t-shirt, five bucks. That is that is quite the deal. So today's the last day then. Mm -hmm. Cyber Monday. Run, don't walk. <laughs> okay, pianissimo. I really enjoyed the coaches. Will there be more in 2023? We are working on some stuff for 2023. I have no names to announce right now, but I can promise you we're working on some really cool guests for the new year. Diana P, I got my Christmas songbook. Are there any lessons here on piano to supplement the sheet music? Uh, Kevin will be doing a tutorial which will release in the next couple of weeks and then we're going to focus on some of these in the next couple uh, Piano Bench episodes. Yes, we're gonna be talking about some of the songs and we're also gonna be taking some requests from you to see which song uh, you guys wanna hear tutorials on in here. So um, if you wanna throw some suggestions in the forums, take a look at the song lesson there and then that'll help us make our decision too. Yes. Jeff, I bought the Christmas book. Is there also a downloadable version? You should have been sent a download of the public domain songs from here. If you haven't been sent that, send an email to support at pianote.com. An author, I was wondering if the piano headphones have the capability to go with Bluetooth or Wi-Fi. They do not. They are only straight into your piano or device. 
Yes, all cables. There's, uh, there's some pianos, I know, because be, these headphones were like kind of made for the piano pianos. players and pianos. And, and with Bluetooth headphones with piano, there's like a delay sometimes, and we just thought, mm -mm. Straight to the source, Straight friends. to the source. Straight to the source. <laughs> Francis, oh, same thing about the lessons. We answered that one. Bill, one of the things I always thought was lacking with piano, there was no solid jazz path for intermediate players. Kevin sounds like the real deal. Will there be real jazz course at some point? Yes, Bill, I promise. Um, we have had so many big projects um, this last little half of the year. Kevin's an expert at jazz. So of course we're gonna have him teaching. So he's already mentioned he's starting with a, like a sort of a beginner's course on jazz, but I'm fairly certain that that will be continually developed. Yeah, there's some, like, we can't speak to what some of the plans are, but we'll have some stuff going along with the, with the jazz course, hopefully, and um, there will be some more jazz content added, as, because that is such a important, you know, streamline, because we do have, a, like, a huge classical section now, mm -hmm. and so now we're also working on kind of building up some more of our jazz repertoire for our more, you know, late beginner students or early intermediate students and beyond, because you can kind of just take jazz and run with it. Because it's crazy that way. <laughs> uh, yeah, there... We, yeah. There's some things. There's coming lots up. coming down. There's a really cool thing happening Jan first. Oh, yes, there is. <laughs> we can't say what it is, but there is something. Cool it's kind happening. of a big deal, and it's like something you guys have been asking for. Yeah, for Lisa, a long time. that's a, that's about all we can say, Lisa. <laughs> uh, Soon. Come on. I know. I know. You're no fun, Kevin. I know, but it's. I feel like you're like Tom Holland. You know. Who's that? Tom Holland is Spider-Man, and he is the guy who cannot keep secrets. And he, he gets but he gets like tricked into saying things sometimes, or he'll say something and be like, oh, I wasn't supposed to say anything. Lisa is the type of person where if you follow her on Instagram or something, she'll be on like a live, and you'll see like the secret piano plans behind her, and she'll have no idea that like everyone sees her whole schedule for like 2023, all like the master plans. That's Lisa, so give her a follow, Lisa Witt Music, <laughs> on Instagram Thanks, if you want to. You want to be in on the latest piano that happenings. you're not supposed to know. Yes. <laughs> oh goodness, uh, the Cheshire Cat. I feel like it's like it needs to come back. Like the Cheshire Cat kind of died. Kevin, you were mm. not privy to the Cheshire Cat. I wasn't. Okay, so for the OG pianos here, with our foundations, we had a song called the Cheshire Cat, <laughs> and it was just I don't know what it was. It was kind of hard. But like everybody who actually got the song was like, I hate this song so much, but I did it. And so it became infamous. So people would just comment like they got the Cheshire Cat and it just became a thing. Like it was so much a thing we were considering having like Cheshire Cats made to send out. Oh my God. Uh, but like... then we did the method. So that got canceled. Sorry. The cat um, has been put down, I guess. Please, I... not the cat, says Bill. <laughs> <laughs> Don't worry, we're not bringing the cat back. Oh, um, will there be any more podcasts soon? That's been a whole rigmarole. Um, oh, I hope so. <laughs> we're, we're working on it. Um, stay tuned. Yes. Stay tuned. We are going to go now. <laughs> <laughs> and Greg, that's very sweet. I'm so glad that you're here learning the piano. Um, Josh. It has nice. nine lives, so it's Josh. That's terrifying. Uh, <laughs> my favorite arpeggio is the spa arpeggio. How did you know? I'm doing an arpeggios lesson tomorrow. I'm filming one tomorrow, and I go a little bit off grid on this, I'm gonna tell you. So they're not like standard like root fifth root arpeggios. I have like Ooh. two that are pulled from songs, and they're kind of like, I don't know. Fancy We're gonna see arpeggios. if you guys like it. I pulled two, arp two patterns from two famous songs, well actually three. One of them's basic, one of them's Iconic. One of them's a little more subtle, but very pretty. So very pretty. That's all I got for you. <laughs> so that's, that's very all. exciting. That's very exciting. That's our day. Um, yes, the hoodies are on sale. So before we go, let me just review with you all very quickly here. The hoodies are on sale. Both of our hoodies are on sale. This is one of them, and it's on sale for eighteen dollars. All of our shirts are on sale um, for five dollars, including the super amazing um, rainbow one. So you should get that. Also, the mugs are on sale for five bucks. So if I were you, I'd go hook yourself up with a hoodie and a mug and a t-shirt because that would be a very affordable. Somebody do the math for me, please. Um, and then you could also throw in the Christmas book while you're at it because you deserve it. <laughs> 
Um, and then I mean, if you wanted a big ticket item for under your tree, it's not that big ticket. It's just the right amount of ticket. How much are these Truman? One forty-nine. Yeah, the regular one eighty-nine. And these are like professional headphones, so they're worth every penny. They make Kevin a little wider. <laughs> but they'll make your piano sound perfect in your ears. So I think that's all the things it's going to tell you. For those of you joining us on YouTube that don't have a piano membership yet, we do have a crazy sale on our yearly membership. It comes with some cool stuff and our lifetimes. Uh, so go to piano.com so that you can see those really cool deals. Uh, yes, we save this in our live section on YouTube so you can just come back and watch it later. Um, and we're here every single week. And every week we have a theme. If you look on the live schedule, you'll see what we'll be talking about coming up. I just wish I could go through my entire life with um, Kevin playing background music. <laughs> it's the best. Oh, we have a request for a song. What is the song? Uh, this is Georgia on my mind. I don't know this one very well. Um, Mark, you can't ask for a song without requesting a, a title. Kevin's just gonna keep playing until I see a song title pop up that I'm like, yeah, I can do that one. Oh no, we have to go because the drum heels are here. <gasps> the drum heels are here. Because drum department's going live in a second, so I don't know that we have time to perform you guys a song. <laughs> so we're gonna have to go, but I'll sing for you next week. How's that? Bring your song requests and we'll have a good old time. Goodbye, everyone. Thanks for being here. Till next time. Til next